Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. On today's show, Dwayne Taves visits with Tom Zacharias about national crop insurance services and the services they provide. Then enjoy this week's Kansas soybean update. Next, Kyle Bauer and Warren McDougall talk about central life sciences and insect growth regulators. Then it's this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update and we'll end with Plain Talk featuring Kyle and Dwayne. Stay with us. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome to Farm Factor. Up first today, Dwayne Taves visits with Tom Zacharias to talk about National Crop Insurance Services and the services they provide. Tom, tell us a little bit about uh, the organization and what you're about. Our organization is a service company that works for the insurance companies that actually write the business. We don't actually sell policies or adjust claims, but we service those companies that do. We provide them loss adjustment research services. We do training and education and actuarial work, economic analysis for the companies. We think about uh, crop insurance, uh, it's well known that its importance uh, to producers is well established uh, in providing that safety net, if you will, to to allow producers, should a a catastrophe happen, that they have a chance to to grow again the next year. Absolutely. Nationwide, there's probably about 80 to or 85 percent of the acres have some form of crop insurance on them. Coverage levels are in excess of 70%, so high deductibles, again, nationwide. And part of that is because of the support crop insurance has received from both the House and Senate Agricultural Committees through the Farm Bill over the years. And it's provided that level of support and risk management for America farmers. There is a a component, though, of that, uh, that it's kind of a three-pronged approach. Uh, The producer's paying premiums. Uh, It's supported by government programs as well. And then you've got independent companies that actually make it happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The three-way cross-sharing and crop insurance, I think, is one thing that makes it a very compelling and good policy choices for all that involve American taxpayer, farmers, and uh, U.S. government. You're absolutely right. Government uh, helps contribute to support part of the farmer's premiums. Companies are on loss adjustment and expenses to uh, deliver the program. And the farmers, they pay a portion of the program last year or this year, probably $3.6 billion in farmer paid premium. And then also it's important to note that with these policies at those 70% coverage levels or higher, farmers are absorbing that portion of the loss before they receive an indemnity. So there's a lot of cost sharing on the farmer's part. Well, certainly it allows uh, for everybody to have skin in the game, so to speak, and, and it's in everyone's best interest uh, to make that program then successful. Absolutely. Again, at the end of this year, we're hopeful in that regard, hopeful for the American farmer. Uh, that said, crop insurance does has, it own, has its own underlying legislation, and if that doesn't be the case, farmers will still have crop insurance available in 19. We think about uh, the variety of options out there. Uh, The industry has been pretty responsive to the needs of the growers. There's a lot of new products out there and uh, a good suite of products. They can protect just their yields. There's revenue coverage, which is extremely popular in the Midwest. There's whole farm protection coverages. And now, starting just at the end of this year, dairy revenue protection, which is new on the scene which will expand uh, farmers' capacity to absorb that risk. Our thanks to Tom Zacharias with uh, National Crop Insurance Services joining us on Ag AM in Kansas. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. We'll be right back after these messages for this week's Kansas Soybean Update. To see this show and past episodes of Ag AM in Kansas, go online to agamincansas.com. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about employee safety and work comp coverage. On your farm, 
Do you ask your friends to come help? Are they considered employees or neighbors helping neighbors? Did you know that you can be held responsible just as if it's a work comp accident? Give me a call, we can discuss. 316-945-6733. Next time you see a beautiful field of corn, reach out and thank the farmers who work tirelessly to raise corn for livestock feed, renewable fuels, and exports to feed a growing world population. The farmers on the Kansas Corn Commission work for Kansas Corn with grower-funded checkoff dollars that support foreign and domestic market development, research, promotion, and education to expand opportunities for Kansas farmers. To learn more, visit kscorn.com. This segment is brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Robin Bloom is joining us. She is the Education and Events Coordinator with the Kansas Department of Agriculture. Robin, the month of March has been designated as Kansas Ag Month, and that is in conjunction with National Ag Day, March 14th, which is Kansas Agriculture Day. So March is an exciting month for us. It's an opportunity to celebrate all that is Kansas agriculture, you know, as agriculture um, contributes to 44.5% of the state's total economy. It's a chance to recognize those hardworking farmers and ranchers who produce the food that feed the world. So this year, the national theme is food for life. So part of our efforts in celebrating Kansas Ag Month is the Neighbor to Neighbor Statewide Food Drive. We've partnered with Dillon's Food Stores and the three Feeding America food banks, which is Harvester's, Kansas Food Bank, and Second Harvest Community Food Bank to do a food drive the entire month of March. Robin, also on Kansas Ag Day, March 14th, the Kansas Dairy Association will be busy. They are hosting the Mobile Dairy Classroom um, on the Capitol Steps on the south side on the 14th. And so they will be giving 20-minute demonstrations showing the process of how the milk gets to the farm to the table. The demonstrations will take place at 1030, noon, and again at 130. March 25th, also a big event that will take place on the campus of Kansas State University. In partnership with Alpha Zeta, we have brought together Justin Knopf. He was a part of the documentary Farmer, Rancher, Fisherman, and he will be presenting about a farmer's perspective on global agriculture. This will take place on Throckmorton Hall on Kansas State University, room 1014 at 5.30 p.m. And Robin, one way that anyone can help out is through social media, too. So we encourage everyone to follow along the hashtag KSAgMonth to learn more about Kansas agriculture. Um, you can also follow along with other ag organizations throughout the state, such as Kansas Soybean, Kansas Department of Agriculture, and other organizations. And during that time, if they want resources to help start their own food drive or to put together an Ag Day event, they can go to the KDA's website? Yes, it's agriculture.gov slash KS Ag Celebrations. And on there, we've got the resources to host your own food drive, um, celebrate Kansas Ag Day by hosting your own event. We also have resources available for teachers and educators to be able to incorporate agricultural lesson plans in their classrooms. We've um, gathered all of the resources from other ag partners and put together in, a, in one location for you. That is Robin Bloom, who is the Education and Events Coordinator with the Kansas Department of Agriculture, who joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. Hope you enjoyed this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us after the break for more as Kyle Bauer visits with Warren McDougall. What if U.S. soybean oil were an industry sensation? If end users started asking for it by name? That future is here, the time is now. To meet customer demands, the Soybean Checkoff is investing in varieties that produce oil with increased functionality. A message from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. All over the country, more and more communities are making the change to biodiesel made from U.S. soybean oil. And the decision continues improving the health and welfare for millions of Americans while adding billions to our national economy.
Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. This segment brought to you by SureCrop, liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now we learn about insect growth regulators with Kyle Bauer and Warren McDougall. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer. I'm visiting with Warren McDougall. He's with Central Life Sciences, and they do a lot of insect um, prevention work. And I want to call your product for grain an insecticide, but that's actually not correct. No, it's not. It's actually an insect growth regulator. It works by uh, impeding the insect's ability to go from a larval stage to an adult. So, you know, I kind of uh, I kid around saying it's kind of like birth control for bugs. I mean. Once you have no new adults, you're not going to create additional uh, uh, eggs, new larvae. So you break that insect life cycle. And truly, we try to clean out the bins and try to make sure that we don't have the insects inside. But they're going to get in, and the amount of, of reproductive ability of those insects is just staggering. Oh, it's, it's unreal. Just for an example, uh, one Indian meal moth, uh, uh, her progeny within 180 days at ideal temperatures uh, can exceed a billion eggs laid in 180 days. And your product doesn't treat a problem, it prevents a problem. Correct, it's all preventive. You're trying to uh, put it in or on grain uh, to maintain the quality of that grain so you don't get an insect infestation uh, within that grain. The thing that I think is interesting on your product as well is that it's not terribly expensive. No, it runs about uh, two cents a bushel on average. Uh, here again, depending on the rate, the formulation, you know, it might be as much as uh, five cents if folks are gonna use a dry product, uh, say for on-farm storage, but two to five is a is reasonable range. And normally, how would that be applied? Well, generally, we do a lot of liquid applications where we're using water, we're putting five gallons of water that has the, the diacon within it uh, on a thousand bushels of grain. Uh, that's the most preferred option, but we also have a dry product that uh, is really kind of targeted at the, the uh, on-farm market where as they're unloading the trucks, they're, they're loading that bin, they can throw a, a scoop into the auger pit uh, every so often with the goal of trying to get about eight to 10 pounds of Diacon D per thousand bushel. You know, the, the thing is when you put grain in the bin, sometimes we know how fast it's gonna come out, but a lot of times we don't because it depends on what the market is. Interestingly enough, with your product, it doesn't matter if it's been in there a short time or a long time. That's correct. Uh, that's the neat thing about Diacon is it lasts such a long time. Uh, generally, we see at the, at the right rate, we're gonna get good insecticidal control for 18 to 24 months. And if I treat it, the next guy doesn't really mind that it's been recently treated with your product. No, we've got all the codex approvals. In fact, Diacon is tolerance exempt uh, from the EPA. Uh, it has no effect on a mammal because we, uh, we're we not an insect and the, the thing that impacts in an insect is uh, a juvenile hormone within that insect. So it's essentially benign to you and I. So it makes it safe to handle. Absolutely, absolutely, very safe. So there's a lot of different ways nowadays that we see that we're storing grain out here on the plains, whether it's in a, a bunker or flat storage or, or normal bins. Um, will it work in all those different situations? It does. I mean, th there are some situations where I think it's really a no-brainer. I mean, if a uh, if you've got a facility that is difficult to uh, fumigate or it's difficult to turn that grain, uh, you know, Diacon really fits those situations like flat storage, like uh, bunkers that are being built. Even, you know, we're seeing the popularity of the, of the tube uh, type uh, storage. 
uh, it would make it ideal within that to help protect that grain while it's in those tubes sitting along the edge of the field. We're visiting with Warren McDougall. He's with Central Life Sciences. We've been talking about their product, Diacom. This is Kyle Bauer reporting. Back to you, Jamie. Thanks, Kyle. Come back after this break for this week's Kansas Farm Bureau update. Mark your calendars for Tuesday, March 26th in Beloit, where the first ever Stock Growers Field Day will be held by K-State Research and Extension, the Kansas Livestock Association, and the Kansas Bull Test. The event will be highlighted by a market outlook from Cattle Facts as well as a presentation from well-known reproductive physiologist Dr. Rick Funston where he speaks about increasing production efficiency. From there we'll also play host to over 30 ag-based businesses in the trade show and enjoy breakout sessions where producers can listen to speakers on topics that apply directly to their operation. This event should cater to producers of all size and scale and offer a social aspect as well. So we look forward to seeing you there for the inaugural Stock Growers Field Day in North Central Kansas. As fourth generation farmers themselves, Heinen Brothers Ag Service understands the risk and rewards of farming. So when it comes to quality aerial and ground application, fertilizer, ag chemicals, and anhydrous ammonia, call Heinen Brothers Ag today, 800-760-4964. I had this horse, it was a good horse, except when the wind was blowing above 30 mile an hour. Wind was blowing about 35, 40, and I saddled him up, rode him out to the end of the lane, and I thought, well, he's doing pretty good. And about six jumps later, I was laying on the ground and thinking, boy, my shoulders sure hurt. I kept waiting and it, it didn't get better. And so I went to an orthopedic surgeon and that showed that I had torn rotator cuff. And said, well, I have to do surgery. I, I farm and ranch by myself. It's not gonna work out very well. I'd been sleeping in my recliner for about two and a half years because it hurt too much to sleep in bed on my side. And, I'd heard about Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center on the radio. Gotten down there at eight o'clock in the morning and by 11.30 the procedure was all over. They just took some fat out of my side here and spun that down for about 45 minutes and then injected it in my shoulders and I was on my way. It's something you don't hear about, but I thought it was worth a try and I'm really pleased. It's, it's really worked out well for me. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau Update. Uh, so I'm here today because uh, Senate Bill 32 um, is important to me. Not only does it um, hit home for a lot of farmers uh, like myself, but also uh, small business owners. Um, I'm here today because it's important to me to convey to these legislators how much this bill affects not only our well-being, but financially for myself. Um, my wife is fishing up vet school and I uh, am a small business owner and a farmer, so we pay out of pocket for all of our health care. And as far as health care options, as far as their affordability, it just doesn't cut it for us. So that's why I'm here today. As most people know that are in the farming world, farm incomes aren't quite what they used to be. Um, and so basically the, the less percentage uh, that we spend on healthcare, the better. And I know right now for myself personally, it's pushing a third of our take home pay goes to healthcare, um, which to me is just unacceptable. And I, you know, uh, as a young person, I know a lot of other young farmers and ranchers that um, basically just forego uh, the cost of health insurance. They just choose to run without it because it's simply not affordable. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways. Of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at kfrm.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. 
The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Kim Mannering with Hardy Insurance. Today we will talk about umbrella coverage. Did you know that if you're held liable in any type of accident, the judgment can claim your assets? Please give me a call so we can discuss 316-945-6733. This segment brought to you by Kansas Corn. Learn more at kscorn.com. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Dwayne are up to on Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk with the man who taught his his that his mother taught him about genetics. You want to start You're that just over? Just like your father. No, <laughs> I don't want to start it over. You're gonna go with we're, it. This is a live show that we're, we're just. Not, you can't do do overs in life, Dwayne Taves. Just like your father. You're just like your father. Oh, uh, nothing from the maternal side. You just you just need to take that as a call. Everything right? paternal transferred. And, Unless it's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Your fact or fiction question of the day, Kyle Bauer. Ancient Greeks would award winners of sporting events carrots. Fact or fiction? Now, that doesn't seem right. I'm going with fiction. It is fiction. Do you not remember the other day we were talking about that most uh, Olympians were... uh, Vegetarian? Yeah, vegetarian. Uh, they were awarded celery as their big winning prize. You know, celery nothing is an like a big prop. stalk of celery to chow down on. I will tell you, one day I was in the Central Valley in California and stopped and watched a crew harvest celery, and yeah. it was fascinating. There was pretty probably, quick with a knife, were they? Well, I tell you, that tractor did not go very fast, mm-hmm. and there was about thirty people picking about twelve rows. And one guy would pick two rows, and he would put it up on a stand where a lady was sitting there with um, kind of at a sink type thing. Right. And she would wash it off and hand it to an next person who would shove it in a bag. They'd put it up to the guy on the conveyor. All of them would come together. The guy on the conveyor would put them in the box. <laughs> They'd drop the lid on the box, put it on the pallet. And that was the last time that celery saw the... Light a day. Yeah. I mean, those right people up until picking they that. Broke it out at your grocery store. Broke it out in your home. Well, I mean. Because, it it's, because that plastic true. bag is the one you take yeah. home. It wouldn't have seen the light of day, per se. It has seen light in the grocery store, but not and, um, day. <coughs> it was a lot of people working like mad. And I was out there taking pictures. I wondered <laughs> if they would. I kind of invited they didn't, myself. They didn't hail you over for no, help. I walked across the field about. No, Probably looked at that know. old boy and said, "Yeah, I ain't yeah. gonna trust him with a knife." Yeah, well, no, they didn't ask me to help. So no. the guy at the ground level, did he just cut it at the base yes. and pitch it up? The next one, well, he would cut like four or five of them at a time, right? And then put them, not pitch them up, set them up there. Okay. And, um, but then the next one up has a knife to cut the tops and the excess leafage. And and she's and then washes it and then she hands it to a person who puts it in a bag. Right. Yeah. It was amazing and and this tractor literally is moving slow enough you can hardly see it move, but it's moving at the right speed to right. go across that field. When that pallet got full, then they had a crawler tractor with a forklift on it who would take that off to a trailer that was sitting on the edge of the field. And this field was maybe 10 acres. Yeah. And from the speed they were going, I would guess it was going to take. <laughs> All day to get to the other no, side. Well, no, a week to do that whole field. Right. But yeah. I mean, there was a lot of celery in it. <laughs> so a lot of plant-based material coming out so of there. So you're a cook. Do you cook with celery? Seldom. Seldom. Why? You don't Just like it? Just don't really see what most of what I cook. It doesn't take celery. One thing I noticed in New Orleans when we were down there was they leave their celery in larger chunks. Whenever I it's whenever I have cooked with it, I've cut it up in let's say less than a half inch long piece. That because you're I, trying to hide it from people. Well, I don't know because it didn't really taste like that much, but they left it in one inch long pieces, in so, there. so you actually got a a good crunch. Or you could time. pick it out. Well, there you go. 
Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Egg Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at eggpromosource.com.